All right, I thought it might be cool to make a quick video about four things that I appreciate or like about the TI-36X Pro that the Casio FX991EX lacks or is somewhat lacking in. And then I'm going to do the flip-flop. With the TI-36X Pro, it's really good about allowing the user to reuse previous results and expressions. So, for example, just contrived examples here, 0 plus 9.81 times 2.6. So just using a quick equation to find my final velocity. And let's say for some reason they had asked me to express this in kilometers per hour. So I could go to my conversion menu, go to speed, go over here and pick kilometers per hour. We get that answer and we write it down and we move on. We're still going to stay with meters per second for the next calculation, which is kinetic energy. So we'll do one half of our mass times that velocity final squared. Well, I could rekey it in, but what's nice is you can just hop back up here, grab it, square it, and get your final answer. So it's this idea of being able to go back and grab any value you want anywhere in the stack. You can go up as high as you want. It keeps track of a lot. You can also grab a previous calculate or expression and you know grab that and tweak it. So for example if I wanted to redo this but instead of 2.6 I wanted that to be 2.9 I can do that. Okay now let's look at the same deal on the Casio. 0 plus 9.81 times 2.6 kind of get our fractional answer. You can change that so that it always defaults to the decimal. And let's say now I wanted to convert that into our conversion. We're dealing with a velocity, so we find it on the menu. And we are doing to kilometers per hour. So here we get that same answer. And now we're going to do our kinetic energy. One half times ten times that velocity final squared but there's no way to go back up and grab it. And since I, on purpose, had an in-between calculation, I can't just hit answer. Because I didn't plan ahead, I need to go back up to that right here, hit equal, and store it. And I'll store it in A. So now I've got that value, and I can do my one-half mass times velocity, which is stored in A, squared and I'll get the answer. That is not as streamlined obviously. So just wanted to point out that's a win for the TI. Alright let's talk about how the calculations on the TI are stored even when the calculator is turned off. This is nice because let's say right now I got a phone call. Some time passes and now I've come back, and oop, my calculator powered off. That's all right. It was good to talk to my mom. I like when she calls me on the telephone. Anyway, um, all is not lost. Everything's still here. So I could just pick up and resume wherever I was. Grab any calculation. It's all still there. If we do the same thing on the Casio... The same deal. Let's say we did those calculations. They're still there at this point. I can grab anything I want. Not as easily, but I can at least still access the numbers. But some time goes by. I get another phone call. I come back. My calculator's off. I turn it back on. And I go back up. And there, there's nothing. This thing has been wiped clean like those old toys where you could kind of peel it up and erase it or an Etch-a-Sketch that you shake. Yes, that may be a little bit dated as an example, admittedly, but you get the idea. It's a clean slate. How big a deal that is, I don't know. It's up to you. All right, third thing I like about this TI. You don't lose anything when you switch menus or modes. In other words, let's say I had done that same kind of calculation and for whatever reason I needed to do a uh, find some quadratic roots. On this calculator you do that by going into the poly solver and 
selecting number one. Let's put in some fake coefficients here. We'll ju we'll just go with what's in here. I'm not sure if it's a pretty answer or not. Nope, pretty ugly. But anyway, in fact, it's imaginary. So let's say, though, I got that result and for whatever reason recorded that. And done with that. Everything I did is still here. So I could go back and grab that velocity from before and use it um, and whatnot. But I like that. I like that all that, uh, all that information stays. I could do, also could do a quick... I don't know, for whatever reason, I need to do a, an a imaginary calculation. Or calculation with a complex numbers is probably a better way to say that. Um, say we divided that, and we got our answer. And we wanted to go back. Well, as you can see, I didn't even have to change modes to do that. So obviously, my answers are still here. I like that. Let's look at that on the Casio. All right, so here we are with the Casio. Let's say we had some kind of calculation, and now we need to find those roots. Um, we go into our, there's a couple ways to do it, but to get to it, do a polynomial second degree, and I actually don't remember for sure, but I'll, I'll just throw some in here. It was something along these lines. So we get our two roots, hit menu, and I could either type a 1 or just go back up here, turn it back into a normal calculator. And now, nothing's there. So any calculations that I had done are erased. Okay, in ditto, let's say that I did had a calculation, and now I need to do a complex calculation. 1 plus 2i. Oh, it doesn't work, so i, I got to go into complex mode. That's not a big deal, but it's not convenient either. And put our calculation in. And now I'm going to go back to my original calculation. Again, I could just hit a 1 here. I can go over on the menu. Uh, everything's gone again. So as soon as I switch these to a different menu, I lose what I had done with the following caveat. If I stored that information and I want to recall it, that's still there. So even when the calculator powers off, it does keep track of anything you've stored in memory. It does not lose those values. So all is not lost, quite literally. Okay, the last thing I wanted to look at is on the TI-36. It will show all the roots of a polynomial in a consistent way even if those roots have a multiplicity greater than one. So we go into the polynomial solver and we're doing a cubic here. A 1, a negative 13, a 51, and a negative 63. Obviously I had done that previously. Solve it and we see that we have x1 of 7, x2 of 3, and x3 of 3. So our double root is 3. On the Casio, let's look at the same thing. So we'd go menu, over here. We're doing a polynomial of the third degree. It's cubic. And we'll put in our coefficients. 1, negative 13, 51, negative 63. And we find our roots. We get one root is 7. The second root is 3. And that's it. There is, it won't give you any other roots. So you're left to wonder whether the 3 is the double root or the 7. Is that a big deal? Eh, not so much. It does come up in uh, Algebra 2, say, when you're factoring, but not a huge deal. But it is something nice about the TI. All right, let's turn the tables here. Let's look at some things four things that the Casio does well, that the TI does less well. All right, so on the Casio, if you use the quadratic solver, it gives very nice answers. So we go down, down, over. We're doing a polynomial second degree. Let's put in our coefficients of 3, 3, and negative 3. And it gives a very nice 
negative 1 plus root 5 over 2, and of course negative 1 minus square root of 5 all over 2. The other thing is if you did want the decimal, you just hit this SD button and it gives it to you. So I like that. And go back up, grab this one. Thumbs up, Casio, on that. Let's look at the same thing on the TI. If we went into our polysolver and we put in those coefficients, 3, 3, oops, actually that points out a thing I don't like. It doesn't automatically clear them. 3, you got to hit clear if you have more digits. 3 and negative 3. Don't like that. And I also don't like that our answers are only decimals and hitting this fraction button doesn't change anything. Let's look at a second thing I like about this Casio. When we're working with complex numbers and we're going from polar to rectangular or rectangular to polar, we get exact answers on the Casio. Now, first of all, let's put it into radians because that's a more interesting demonstration. And for this calculator, you have to tell it you're working with complex numbers. Go into that menu or that mode. And now let's enter it. Negative square root of 3 plus i. And we want to convert that to polar coordinates. So we hit options, we go down a menu, and we pick this number 1. So we're telling it here, we're going from rectangular to polar complex. And we get magnitude of 2 at an angle of 5 6 pi, or 5 pi over 6 radians. And let's do that the other way around. If we were going 2 at an angle, and I didn't have to re-enter it, but I just want to show this. Let's do 5 pi over 6, and we want to now go back to the rectangular version of that same complex number. We get negative square root of 3 plus i. Now let's look at the TI doing the same calculation. First of all, let's put it into radians. And now, let's enter our complex number in rectangular coordinates. It's nice, we don't have to go into any different mode. We can just start typing it right away. I like that. We use this multi-function key to get our I. We're dealing with complex numbers, so we go to this complex menu. And now we're going to go down, find that same convert to R theta. We hit enter, and we get a magnitude of 2 at an angle of 2.618 radians, which is 5 pi over 6. We could check that. However, there's no way to get the exact answer. It's just stuck in that format. Now let's go back the other way. We do 2. We go into complex to get our angle symbol and we're doing 5 pi over 6. We want to convert this complex number into rectangular coordinates. So we find that here. Hit enter. And we get the answer, negative 1.73 plus 1i, which is negative square root of 3 plus i but it's not very pretty and there's no way to get it to be pretty. So if you did a lot with this sort of math, say in like a trigonometry pre-calculus class, uh, I like the Casio better. Alright, let's look at another nice little feature of this Casio. If I multiply these two four-digit numbers together, I quickly can tell that that is seven million because I have a nice little digit separator doesn't actually put a comma in there, but it does have a space. And that hides underneath this digit separator menu. You can go in there and toggle it on or off. All right, the TI does not have a digit separator. So when you multiply these sorts of numbers together, the result is just one string of digits. So at a glance, it's not as obvious that that's 7 million. And yes, I know there's scientific notation and whatnot, but not as nice. All right, this fourth item may seem so trivial it's dumb, uh, but it comes up all the time in high school math. 
it's nice to not have to shift every time you want to use the square root symbol. So if I wanted to do the square root of 5 squared plus 12 squared, I just hit the square root key and type them right in. It might be laughably trivial to some of you, but if you're doing square root constantly, those things add up, in my mind at least. Reduces friction. So here we go the, on the TI. If I want to do that same calculation, I have to shift square root and then 5 squared plus 12 squared. Is that a reason to buy the Casio over the TI? Probably not, but who knows? If you're a really huge fan of square roots and just do them for fun, then hey, maybe. All right, so that concludes this brief comparison. I recognize that some of you will think this is dumb, but I'm asked from time to time which calculator I prefer, and I think it's helpful just to demonstrate each of them and showing some things that they do well or not so well and just where they differ. In the end, all these calculators, whether it's the TI, the Casio, or the Sharp, they all do great job, or a great job, and they're all around that $20 price point in the US. So you can't go wrong. I think if I was doing a lot of engineering and science, I would want the TI-36 because of that simple ability to go back up and reuse calculations. Um, if I was doing a whole lot of high school math, then I think I would like the Casio because it's got the better root solver, you know, it does a better job with the quadratic formula given those exact answers and a little bit better with the pre-calculus type stuff. Ergonomics I like a little bit better, but again, really close to a toss-up. All right, well, thanks for listening. Hopefully this was of some interest, even if it wasn't exactly riveting. Take care.